Good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship today. You look very fine and spiffy, all dressed up in splashes of red everywhere. Very nice, very nice. So thank you for participating in that as we officially launch our our, um, Red Shield Appeal in our area um, today. We have some good things in store, so that will be awesome. Before we continue, though, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we gather today, the Ghana people, and we pay respect to their elders past and present, and uh, we look for opportunities to demonstrate reconciliation, both as an organisation, but more importantly, as individuals, as members of that organisation, because it begins with us. And uh, I want us to remember that as we move forward. I have some uh, words that I would like to share, which are from Psalm 138, and it says, I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. For you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame. When I called... You answered me, you greatly emboldened me. I was thinking about that word, about being emboldened. Do you know what that means? Yeah, being bold. And I think brave and courageous. And I think when we're um, inviting you to uh, be present in our community, to ask people for financial donations, sometimes we need a bit of emboldening, don't we? So I thought that was an appropriate word for us to have today. When we call on God. He answers us and he will embolden us. So um, today we are launching, a, um, we're planning to look at the doctrines over the next while, but we're, we, there's 11 doctrines of faith that the Salvation Army have and we decided that we're not going to do all 11 all at once because that's a bit heavy going. So we're going to do them in sort of spattered throughout the years, because we've only got a few for this year. Um, So we're going to have a look at the first three over the next three weeks. So we're looking at doctrine number one today, and that's about the authority of scripture. And I'm just wondering, Bandmaster, if I have the right tune for the song. No, I'm nowhere near it, am I? So, and I'm not even sure I've actually sung this song before, but I remember we were having a conversation about how this song fits. So just hang on a sec. Are you going with what's in there? So you're going with the tune? Excellent. Has anyone heard that tune before? You have. Excellent. All right. So. (laughs) So (laughs) we'll get there. We'll get there. So the, the song says, I have read of men of faith who have bravely fought till death, who now the crown of life are wearing. Then, they thought, then the thought comes back to me, can I not a soldier be, like though, to those martyrs bold and daring? And in verse 2, it talks about with the sword of God in hand. And we talk about the word of God being his sword. And so that's why we've chosen this song. So if you're going to be bold, emboldened, <laughs> let's stand. And we will sing the first two verses of this song following the band. Thank you.
Wow, you're going great guns. Well done. Well done. All right. Um, do we know who Jehovah is? Because that's who we're fighting for. Do we know who Jehovah is? Yes, that's a name for God, isn't it? Yahweh. It's a, um, Jehovah. Um, just I like to make sure that everybody is clear because sometimes we sing words without having a clue, don't we? Yes, you know it's true. You know it's true. All right. Is there someone who would like to read out the words of verse 3 before we sing them today? Amen. Amen. Hell to defeat is my endeavor. That's our goal, is to defeat hell. So we will sing verses three and four. Thank you. I'd ask you, you can be seated, and uh, I ask that you give attention to Peter. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I have weird and wonderful things in my wardrobe for different days, and this is just one of many. All right, um, share with you good news. Yesterday, um, uh, our Community for Children's group went down to the uh, Paraka Farm... Uh, community centre. It actually felt like a farm. I don't know why. There must someone in the area must have been spreading blood and bone because it just stank for the first part of the morning. Um, but the good news was was that I was standing back as a new person who was watching people work, and the amount of people that would come up with older kids now who would saw Katrina and go, oh, I haven't seen you since she was this big and they'd been to high primary school and been doing everything. And it was just amazing to see the amount of connections, not only through you to Katrina, but through the C4C team, who just knew all these families and kids and, and not necessarily our Sunday congregation, but there are weekday congregation kids and families. We're coming back to Money Music. I've got a granddaughter now. I'd like to come back to um, First Steps and, and during the week. And it was just awesome awesome to see. So good news that I felt to the thing was just seeing community in amongst all that we do and it was just absolutely amazing. So there's good news for this morning. Um, as Belinda said, it is Red Shield time. If you notice on the little tiny little banner over here, you'll notice our guest of honour is, is sitting there. That's a lovely picture of Belinda um, many, many years ago. Uh, I think if we turn it around, there's actually a picture of Aaron Stobie on the back as well. <laughs> So Red Shield is here. It's kind of snuck up with me and Belinda having a uh, bit of time away with illness. It's kind of crept up on us and we feel a little unprepared. So there are some rosters out there on the table for um, Ingle Farm as well as Tea Tree Gully Shops. Please go and fill it in. I am not the type of person to hunt you down for volunteering because that's not volunteering, that's subscription. So volunteering is you heading out there and actually putting down and actually volunteering and putting in. And if you don't, then it means I do more hours down there. So please go and have a look out. It's by the front door. Fill in as many hours as you can. And um, if you have any queries, come and see myself or Belinda. On the sad side of news, we've got uh, uh, some information on Sally Souter's funeral. And that'll be happening on Friday at 10 a.m. at the Harrison's Funeral Home in Ridgeway. Uh, if you do need any more information, uh, you better go see Belinda. Um, she'll know a little bit more than myself, but unfortunately that's it. 
Um, June came up and saw us today and asked for some prayer for her nephew's father-in-law, who lives in Sydney, who's having a little bit of heart issues at the moment, some health care. So please just add uh, uh, June, but also her uh, nephew and his father-in-law into your prayers. As you'll notice on the prayer list here, just make sure you uh, are praying and praying for those lovely people you got on your cards as well. Uh, blokes, it's Blokes Church today, tonight. Come along, we'll be out the front, barbecue. I have red food and I also have, uh, uh, um, what do you call it, um, cherry ripes as well for someone at the back um, and red cups and red serviettes. So come along and have, I didn't get red sausages because I thought, I got red creaming soda and I've got red Sprite. So I think that'd be enough. So when we all come home, all us guys will be hyperactive on red stuff. So it should be pretty good. Um, Companion Club, Elvis Presley is going to be in the building. So those of you who come along, you'll, uh, I'm sure, and I'm sure that uh, Nat will be sick and tired of hearing Elvis Presley songs by the end of the morning. Um, out the front with our donations to doorways. Remember, we're doing tea, coffee and sugar. It's been good so far, but remember, we don't want a five kilo bag of sugar or a you know, big box of coffee because we're giving it out to people for their individual serves. So... The smaller ones that you've got would be absolutely fantastic. Um, the Historical Society have moved their day to tomorrow night. So if you haven't missed it, that's good. It's actually to on tomorrow night uh, for you to come along at 7.45. And with Red Shield Appeal, make sure that for morning tea you help us out because we have cupcakes for sale. And if you go, oh, I didn't bring any coin, that's okay. We have F-Post. <laughs> So make sure you buy more cupcakes, and if you feel anywhere decline, uh, in, inclined to, you may donate more to the Red Shield Appeal to make sure my bud our budgets look really good for our thing. So thank you so much for any good news. If I do miss stuff and thing during the week, come and see Nat, come and see me and Blinda, and make sure we don't miss stuff out on the news sheet. Make sure you grab one today for information. Thank you. Oh. All right, well... It's um, time for my chat with the children, but um, I'm happy for the children to stay where they are today because I think we're all children at heart, aren't we? So we can participate in this if you would like. If they want to come a bit closer, they can, but there's no obligation to. Um, now, you all know that in our house... Oh, Howard's coming. That's lovely. <laughs> ah, drats. He's never going to do that again, is he? <laughs> so... Um, in my house, you know that we love Lego, all right? That's how we say it, Lego. And for Mother's Day, I got some Lego, and um, I was really excited to make some Lego. Hello, Marlon. How are you, darling? Okay. I, th I thought he was coming to join me, but he's... he's in preparation for when Dad's up there later on today. So, I wanted to show you what I bought. I, what? No, not what I bought, because it was a present for me. What I made. Are you ready? There we go. Ta-da! Now, isn't that pretty? And I'd like to tell you that I just pictured it in my head and made it, just like that. What was that? That might be a bit of a lie if I did that. So this is actually... Um, it is a Spider-Man water bottle. How exciting. So I, for me to make this, I actually needed to follow some instructions. And so I have an instruction book like this. Look at that. And in here, step by step, tells you how to build Lego. Okay, Mummy's got a flower too. And in our house, we keep all of our Lego instruction books because not always Lego stays together. Sometimes it comes apart and falls to bits. Yes, I'm sure she does. And I know that even if I had all of the bits and pieces in a box, all the right pieces... There is no way without the instruction book that I would get it looking anywhere like this, anything like this. It might look somewhat, but probably not very close because I needed to follow the instruction book, right? 
Now, um, Nat's got some photos for us to look at because there's a show called Lego Masters. Hence how you say Lego, it's at the start of the name of the show, just so you know. And, and there's some creations there. That is a violin made with a, a real violin and then a Lego violin on the other side. And what else have we got there? <laughs> That's right, the birds with the cat. And we've got the, the, these are the dangling ones. Aren't they amazing? And the thing about these Legos, uh, Lego creations is that people just run off and they don't have an instruction book. They just make them off the top of their head using their imagination. So we've got a train track with a monkey. <laughs> That's half a piñata. Awesome. It's very... And, and the more you look with these Lego creations, the more you can see. Awesome. And that was a um, half a... Like a boombox stereo. And then the rest is Lego underneath. What else do we have? This beautiful deer... Now, they just blow my mind as I see this creativity and I think, how amazing. So they made snow globes. And so the, the globe part... <laughs> All right. Thanks, Marlon. You can do that later. So um, they made, they made uh, the Lego creation had to go up into the snow globe and it was um, this beautiful winter fox that was made there. So as I think about the instruction manual, of course, my brain goes to the Bible because for me, that's my instruction manual. And I think, well, that's what Lego can remind me about life is that I have to follow the instruction manual to make something beautiful. To make something come into being, I need to do something like that quite clever. However, when I was thinking about, oh, actually, how does that stand true when I think about Lego Masters and the fact that they don't use instruction manuals, they just make stuff? So does that mean that um, people can, in life, just navigate and make beautiful things without following the instructions from the Bible? But I know for a fact that every one of the people in Lego Masters started by following the instruction manual. That was how they began their Lego journey. They were buying kits and they were following instructions. And they got to know how Lego fit together so well by following the instructions that they then were able to navigate bigger projects and bigger lives because they had that as their foundation to depend upon. Can you see where I'm going with this? The same is true for us in Scripture, isn't it? When we know Scripture well enough, it can then help us navigate life and we can have a beautiful life. So that was the lesson that I wanted to um, impart. Hopefully you got some of it <laughs> in and amongst our piano solo there. And I did bring some Lego because I thought, well, the kids might want to do be creative and do some playing with the Lego. So um, I'm not sure. Maddie might want to play with the Lego now because the tub's down here in front of her. But if anyone wants to come and play with the Lego, we've got a giant box of Lego here. I'm not sure. Maybe. Does Claudia want to have a play? Like, Maddie, you might like to head across over there with the Lego and you can go and play if you want to build something or do you want to take it over there so that at least they can play with it later? Is that all right? So if you want to take that. So these are just random bits and pieces from our Lego collection. And we just thought over in that back corner... Now, I know, bandsmen, sometimes when the... No, not tempting for you to play with Lego. That's not what it was, Elliot. Settle down. Sometimes when you're rummaging around in the Lego, it get, can be a little bit noisy, and we've tried to deaden the noise a little bit, but my rule always is I'd rather noisy kids in church than no kids in church, all right? So we're going to give grace. If we hear the Lego going on, that's going to be okay. Um, but every time you see Lego, you see an advertisement, advertisement for Lego Masters, I want you to think about the instruction, ma the manuals for Lego, and how that can correlate to our understanding of Scripture and our application of Scripture in our lives. Okay? Awesome. 
Now, the singers are going to come and bring their contribution, and after that we will um, have our tithes and offerings.
Thank you, Howard, for that interesting piece this morning. I thought it was going to start off one of his typical beautiful pieces, but uh, it evolved. Good morning. Um, shall we pray? Faithful Father, thank you that you give the gift of abundant eternal life. You have said that you are a good Father who gives us good gifts. Your generosity overflows to us. Everything we have is a gift from you. As we bring our offerings to you, we give back to you from the abundant blessings you have given us. May our gifts be acceptable in your sight. We pray that you will bless and use these gifts to accomplish your will through this church. Grant wisdom to those who will make decisions on the appropriation of this money so that they make good, productive and wise uses of these tithes and offerings we give to you for the benefit of your kingdom. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. The band is now going to bring an arrangement of the chorus deep and wide.
Good morning. That takes me straight back to my Sunday school days. <laughs> Deep and wide. Our reading comes from Paul's second letter to Timothy, um, chapter 3, verses 10 to 17, and chapter 4, verses 1 to 8. It's a final charge to Timothy, the older man writing to the younger man. You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings, what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium and Lystra, the persecutions I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evildoers and impostors will go from bad to worse. Deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Chapter 4. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires... They will gather round them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering. And the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. The Lord bless his word. I reckon we should stand and sing this next song. The band played it in the prelude. It's called The Light Has Come. Let's, uh, let's enjoy and sing this song together. God among us, everlasting Father, Prince who rules in peace. To us a child is born, to 
us a son is given to those who walk in darkness the light has come son of god son of man word of god incarnate suffering savior glorious risen lord for god so loved the world he gave his only son no more we walk in darkness the light has come king of kings lord of love son of god exalted name above every name lamb upon the throne this king will come again the father's only son no more a world in darkness the light will come awesome good sing so it says in scripture that that um, God's word is a lamp unto my path, and it's uh, it's in that song too that it talks about. Well, of course, it talks about the light because it's, you know, the light has come. But it's based on the song is based on Isaiah, who a wonderful counselor, mighty God, Son of God, King of Kings. Um, the line in there says, uh, "For God so loved the world." He gave his only son. The light has come. The light has come in the form of Jesus, no less. Um, And this next song we're going to sing, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. Can't really accept the light unless we open our eyes of our heart to let Jesus in. So let's sing this together. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. High and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. I want to see you, holy, 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 I want to see you, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you. I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you
Father God, that is our prayer, that as we open our eyes of our heart, as we open the ears to listen to the message, that we will see you, that we will hear from you, that as you speak through your servant, we will be transformed people because we become more and more in the likeness of your son, Jesus. Help us understand the authority of scripture today. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Alrighty. I think uh, Blinda's just uh, named something we can do. Can you imagine having Bible masters <laughs> instead of Lego masters? Um, there was a, a little time, I never know if it actually took off, but there was a talking around the time that, you remember So You Think You Can Dance? It was a TV show. Someone came up with the idea that we should do So You Think You Can Preach and actually have a preaching competition. And then we thought that might not turn out too well. Today we are looking at our first doctrine, but first I just want to start with 2 Timothy 3.16. All scriptures are God-breathed. It is useful for teaching, rebuking, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness, so that the servant of God, that's us, may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. How amazing is just that one single verse there. Now, I'm going to, you're going to have to journey with me on this one, okay? So we're going to go back to a little bit of Sunday school, just a little. And it may be something you may know, or you may not never know, and you've never thought about it. Does anybody know how many uh, books there are in the Bible? 66. 66, good job. How many in the old? Sorry, was that? 39 and 27 in the new. So there's 929 chapters in the Old Testament, 260 chapters in the New Testament. There are 23,145 verses in the Old Testament. There are 7,957 in the New Testament. That's a total of 31,102 verses. And we're going to go through every single one of them today to understand what the scripture means. <laughs> but we won't do that. But who's read every single verse? How many times? At least once. At least once. Now, who has a Bible on them today? A physical one. Paper copy. Hold it up. All right. We've got maybe half a dozen, maybe just under a dozen. All right, I've got a bag down here. Sorry, I'm not going to move these. <laughs> she didn't see that. <laughs> All righty. I have my old faithful. This thing has been banging around me since college. It's in my bag, it's worn, the edges are not very good, and that's a NIV version. All right. I have my study Bible, which has all that little information on the side and little reference points for other things, but that's good to read. This is good to use for study. I have an old Bible, which I picked up years and years ago, and this has got to be one of my favourite Bibles ever. It's the Jerusalem Bible. In here, there is no designated chapters. It's just Genesis to Revelation straight through. There's no breaks, there's no stories, there's no names to the chapters, they haven't named it. It is just the Word of God. And I don't use it now because it's falling apart, so it sits on my shelf just happy to have. <clears throat> I have a really old Bible here. And this is the Schofield Reference Bible. And a guy gave it to me because he had it old and it was on his shelf and he thought it'd be useful. It's not. <laughs> it's actually really hard to read because um, it's all split up in different paragraphs with different breakups and you can follow it through, but I have it because he thought it was good and I kept it. 
I have this Bible. It's got my name on it. And again, these are one of the Bibles that you get given and passed down and wandered down. And it's really old. I think if I check my front book page here, it was written in 1934. Now, if you like old books, it actually smells like a really old book, which is kind of good. I enjoy it. It's the chain reference Bible. So it'll, you can read something and read a verse and then go and find out where it links and where it changes and where it joins together with other scriptures throughout. And when you read some scriptures, you realise, I didn't think they were talking about that in the New Testament, about the Old Testament, even in that verse. We know we've got the prophets and they speak about stories and other bits and pieces, but sometimes you go, wow, God was actually thinking about that at that moment when one of his prophets was preaching. So we keep this uh, carefully folded up and put away so it doesn't get damaged. And it's travelled everywhere with me. Um, but again, I don't use it. It sits on my shelf and I know it's a reminder that everything is linked together. And then, because it was in my bag and someone gave me this one, I don't know where it came from, I think it was here, but we have one we can keep in our pocket that's small enough to give out to people when we share the gospel. So the Bible, it comes in so many different shapes, forms, smells, colours, because we're all different. So who knows what our first doctrine of the Salvation Army is without looking on where it is sitting up. Yeah, every officer should put their hand up. Um, we, we got to, uh, when we got commissioned to say it, and then some other people got commissioned with us and they put it up on the screen and we didn't have to memorise it. Remember that, Dave? We got away. Good thing is, if you get it wrong, no one really matters. It's in our songbook, it's on our walls. I'm going to read it so I don't make a mistake. Well, we believe that the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments were given by inspiration of God and that they only constitute the divine, a divine rule of Christian faith and practice. Let's pray. No, the Bible is a book written by authors, by people. It wasn't something that fell from the sky and landed on the floor and someone went, oh, look, a Bible. If that's what you believe, I'm sorry it didn't happen that way. You can come and talk to me afterwards and we can go through it. But it was written by people that experienced the divine work of God. That's amazing. They were inspired by the works, the miracles and the teachings of the divine. The scriptures explore the living relationship between God and his people. Not God and the things that he thought he'd get up to and work. Not with God and what he designed and then he thought one day he might share it when we've all been behaved. But it's about God and his people. God and us. The stories, the places, the peoples, the kings, the kingdoms, the battles, the joys, the losses, the love. Many times you hear people say, wow, that would make a great novel. Am I booming out here? All right, I'll try and be careful. But as I said before, that we have the Old Testament, and we can read that, and there's some great stories in there. There's some great battles. There's some great growing of people. Then we can have the, Old, the New Testament where we can just focus on Jesus. But if we take the Old Testament without the New Testament, it's incomplete. We cannot do it. We cannot just go, you know what, I'm just going to read the New Testament because the Old Testament stuff's kind of weird and whatnot. I don't want to bother. We'll just read this one. It all is one book. It is so important to have it as one page. When we read it in its full context, we have people interacting with God through the ages so that we may have something to be guiding us by. In the early days, the Jews were shown a steadfast love in God, in Isaiah and Hosea. Thank you for uh, waiting for the um, word there from Deuteronomy. Your word is a lamp at my feet and a light on my path. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. 
I'd like to see a, a Bible one day with a torch in it just to push that one along a bit further. I haven't seen one. If you've got one, let me know. I'll, I'll add it to my collection. But your word is a lamp for my feet and the light on my path. Just powerful words, just in those little tiny words. From Amos 5, I hate and despise your religious festivals. Your assemblies are a stretch to me. Even though you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Though you bring choice fellowship offerings, I have no regard for them. Away with the noise of your songs, I will not listen to your harps, but let justice roll on like a river, righteous like a never-failing stream. Kind of harsh words coming out of Amos. But in Hosea 14.4, he says, I will heal their waywardness and love them freely. My anger has turned away from them. I will love them freely. In these words, we can just see that God is saying, I don't need nothing from you. I, as God, need nothing from you, but I give it all to you if you believe in me. And all this leads to the focus on Jesus, God's activity in that space. The acting to bring salvation of mankind to his son. From Hebrews 1, 1 and 3, God's final words for his son. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets and many times in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, who he appointed heir of all things and whom he made the universe. The sun is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word after he had provided purification for sins and sat down at the right hand of majesty in heaven. Wow. Amazing. From going, I do not want your religious Festivals, they are a stench to me. Do not bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings from the Old Testament. But here is my son. And all I ask is that you believe. My son is my radiance. Through him you see me as he sits at the right hand of the majesty of heaven. We go back to Isaiah 5, 1 to 6. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, like a root out of the dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract him to us, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised. Rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one whom hide their faces, he was despised. We held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain, bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, afflicted. But he was pierced with our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us Peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We are like sheep, gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him for all of us. Isaiah 5, we hear the story of Jesus Christ, which was not revealed to many others until the New Testament was not revealed until Jesus walked on the earth. The authority of Scripture from the Old Testament to the New Testament. We cannot remove both books, but we read what God had planned for us and for Jesus in the Old Testament, and it came true for us in the New. Matthew five seventeen to 20 in the New Testament confirms this. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them or to fulfill them. For I tell you, 
until heaven and earth disappear. Not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will be any means disappeared from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Wow. Anyone want a cold fish in the face on that one? When we look at the things that go on, that if we do not understand, if we do not journey with both the law and with what goes on, with the Old Testament and the New Testament, comes together as a package. The scriptures of the Old and New Testament describes Jesus' personal history, proclaiming the gospel message, which we are all a part of today. The scriptures offer what no other book can offer in the same way. It is the word of life. John 1, 1 to 5. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has ever been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. The light that shines in the darkness, the light for our path, and the darkness cannot overcome it. Our first doctrine and the scriptures is a reminder that we have won, that we have conquered death through Jesus Christ, that we are free people to live as Christians with him and have a place in heaven. This is our authority. This is our light. This is our sword against all that come against us, as we sang in that song behind us. Our scriptures are a gift from God. They are not human achievements. We cannot flick over the Bible and go, look what we did. It's actually look at what God gave us. The scriptures are inspired by God, lived out by mankind. And as our doctrine says, the scriptures constitute divine rule of Christian faith and practice. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your book that was inspired to be written by the people that you loved has guided people for generations. And Lord, it makes so much sense even now. Lord, as you mentioned before about building and constructing from manuals, Lord, this is a manual for our lives, a manual for communications, a manual for understanding, for understanding your world, understanding your kingdom, and allowing us to see how you interact with people through the times, that you are able to interact us in the same way. Lord, your book allows us to get a glimpse of what was going on. And Lord, it allows us to see your miracles, your joys, and most of all, your love for us each. So Lord, thank you for what you give us in that. Thank you for us, your son. Thank you that you love us without us giving back to you. So we are a gracious people. And we say thank you for your love, for your kingdom, and your grace. Amen. All right, we're going to sing a song. And again, Howard's going to play for us.
and it's not a song that I'm familiar with, but as I read through the words, I couldn't go past them. For every rule of life is required. Our Heavenly Father has inspired. I mean, there it is in these words. Who would have thought? The scriptures we believe preserve us through our length of our days. He is the object of our praise. Creator, we believe. With God the Father dwell the Son, the Holy Spirit three in one. The Godhead, we believe. While Christ the Son was man is known. He still is God. Two natures, we believe. So we're going to sing... It's six verses, so we do all. So we do the first three, and then we'll sit, we'll stop there and see how we go. So, if you know it, please sing along with me. If you don't, enjoy the words and uh, and what's up there. But we'll stop at verse three. Let's sing. Read out verse 4 for me. And someone want to read verse 5. Verse 6, as we have lived, so we, uh, and, and so shall we gain eternal joy or everlasting pain. God judges, we believe. He is our maker, saviour, friend. We give him worship without end. And now his grace receives. Let's just sing verse 6.
amazing. Our scriptures are powerful. Through that, we find what God promises us and where we can be secure, which is why the last song was chosen. We're standing on the promises of God, my Saviour. So I invite you all to stand. And verse 2 says this, We are standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God, I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God. They sing verses uh, 1 to 3, Dave. Standing on the promises of God, I cannot fail. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Saviour as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. To listen to the Spirit's call, we need to be praying and using our Bibles and reading those stories and using this so we connect with the divine. Let's sing verse 5, Dave. And the benediction is going to be 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 2, uh, 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is God-breathed. It is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the servants of God, everyone standing in front of me, may be thoroughly equipped for the good work of Christ. Amen. And God bless you all.